Uh, I hate that most of you had already sat down, but stand up. We have to have the reading of the scripture. Stand up. We'll get your exercise. Uh, the passage this morning comes from the book of Luke. The book of Luke. Chapter number 15, verses 1 through 10. We find these precious words. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathered around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. When he arrives home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Celebrate with me because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. Or what woman, if she owns 10 silver coins and loses one of them, won't light a lamp and sweep the house, searching her home carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Celebrate with me because I've found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each person here today. And I pray, Lord God, you use me as you see fit uh, to bring encouragement to your children. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I believe everyone of us here today knows what it's like to go from losing something to finding it. Because it's easy for us to lose or forget something, uh, regardless of your age. Can I get an amen? We've all spent time and energy, frankly, frank it, frankly, like being in such an urgency in searching for our keys, phones, and wallets. Why don't you check right now and make sure you have those with you? And sadly, losing such things causes people to be late from time to time because they're trying to find these items late for work and even can miss appointments. This may be surprising to you that a recent survey that I came across shows us that the most common lost item is a television remote. 45% of us lose the remote, our remote controls to our TVs at least once a week. But ultimately, when it comes to losing items such as the TV remote, as far as our keys and wallets, one in every five Americans misplace something important to them every week. So. I say this because I believe we all can relate to Mr. Shepherd and the lady that lost the coin. Amen. Uh, in this passage of scripture this morning, we read about two individuals, a shepherd and a woman, who lost something that belonged to them. And there seems, seemed to have been some urgency for both. Uh, they went through great a great deal uh, to locate what was lost. Nonetheless, they continued to search in the most obscure places until they were able to find what was lost. And after they located what was lost, joy and celebration was experienced by the owners and all of their neighbors. Hidden within this text, we believe Jesus was explaining 
that God the Father knows what it's like to seek after something that belongs to him. Who suddenly became lost. And that something are those people that the Father has claimed, but they choose to be put in the lost position. We all get lost from time to time. Uh, depression can set in. Uh, we could be working one day and get a phone call and lose our jobs. Uh, we could have broken relationships with family members. Some even deal with addictions. Others have struggled and will struggle with the passing of a loved one. Basically, church, anything or at any time when something in life doesn't go as expected, we can choose to shake our fist at God and putting ourselves in a lost position. Well, the good news is, say good news. Y'all listening today. Hey, Amen. This is going to be short. <laughs> the good news is that God the Father has a search party. His search party consists of his son, Jesus Christ, who in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, tells us that the human one, Jesus Christ, he came for one major reason. And that was to seek and save the lost. This morning, I saw a beautiful husky. Did y'all see that dog out there? He is sharp, isn't he? He appears to be lost, doesn't he? Well, this morning, he walked past me, and I noticed how well-groomed he is. And I noticed that he has a collar on him. I noticed that this morning. And also I heard a clinging noise, which indicated to me that this husky perhaps had some type of coin that would let us know who he belongs to, or let me know that. So I tried to get close to him, but he was afraid. The closer I got to him, the further he backpedaled to get away from me. And the louder he barked. He barked so loud, I thought he was going to wake Noah up. Well, after a couple tries to get him closer to me so I may find who, his belonger, who he belongs to, I gave up. After that, I begin to think about God. And I thank God that he's not like me. I believe God wouldn't have given up on that dog. I believe that God would have chased after that dog until he was reunited with where he belongs. And God would have celebrated. He would have been happy that that husky was where he belonged. Well, in Luke 15, verses 7 and 10, it lets us know that God the Father celebrates. He has joy when one of his children makes the decision to have a change of heart in life. Why does that delight God? Why does he call for a celebration? All of heaven is excited because when a person makes a decision, to have a change of heart for Christ and live for Christ, they are where they belong. It's going from being lost to being found. Come on, you know that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. To save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. So today, as we prepare our hearts for communion, 
I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray. And ask God if there's anything you're dealing with to help you. And ask God to forgive you of your sins. And make the decision to turn your life towards him. And or if you've already done that, make the commitment to continue to follow him all the way so that you will be found where you belong in him. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Amen. Thanks be to God. Because Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. And if you ask the Lord to forgive you, be of good cheer and have confidence in the fact that he heard your prayer and that you are forgiven. Please grab a head roll and turn to page nine, and we will continue on in our communion service. The great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be, for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Rick's going to first grab the bread and show it to you and break the bread. And as he do that, does that, reflect on the fact that this is the body of Christ broken for you. Now he's going to display the cup. And as he does that, reflect that this is the blood that was shed for you at the cross of Calvary. Will the ushers please come forward at this time? The servers. We need two on that side over there. Two on that side. We ask you ladies, go ahead and serve each other first. Y'all can go ahead and serve each other, and Rick, you can receive as well. Y'all go ahead and stand over there. Someone may prefer the small cups there. If they prefer the cup here, let them. If they prefer that, they can get that too. Yep. You may come and receive, and I just want to encourage each and every one of you, you don't have to be a member of this church to come and receive from the Lord's table. All are welcome. To come. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. 